Welcome to the February 16th, 2021 meeting of the City of Placerville Planning Commission. Um, please join me in reciting the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag. Ready, begin. Okay, I pledge allegiance to the flag, flag of the United States, States of America. America. Welcome to the Republic for which it stands, the nation under God, under God, invisible, invisible, liberty and justice for all. Please join me in reciting the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag. Ready? All right. Mr. Painter, would you uh, give a roll call, please? Chair List. Here. Vice Chair Lepper. Here. Member Friend. Yes. Member Keeney. Here. Member Raines. Here. Thank you. <clears throat> With a voice vote, uh, may we approve tonight's agenda? Any objections? Those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, hearing none, we move on. Um, item number two, uh, commissioners, please consider the minutes of the January 19th, 2021 meeting. Are there any additions or corrections that need to be made? You are a talkative group tonight. <laughs> no changes by staff. Very good. Um, now we move into uh, items of interest from the public that are not on the agenda. At this time, members of the public may bring before the Planning Commission items that are not on the agenda. We ask that you hold your comments for three minutes or less, and uh, Commission will listen but take no action on these items at this time. Do we have any public members? Mr. Chairman, we have a, um, a Jennifer Chapman has raised her hand to speak. Okay, Jennifer. Jennifer, are you there? Still looking for Jennifer. There we go. Jennifer, are you there? Okay, can okay, you hear me now? Hear me now? In stereo. Okay. <laughs> okay, I think it's connected now. I, I finally got the message that said uh, you can unmute. Okay, so, go ahead. Okay, great. Um, let's see, the first thing, and I know, Pierre, I just haven't gotten an email back, but I did. You know, I did file a um, appeal fee. For, you know, we thought we were going to have a January 5th uh, hearing with this commission about the Cottonwood 4-6 extension. So just wanted to confirm that that, you know, that that check will be returned to, uh, to me kind of on behalf of Friends of Clay Street. Um, so that was one thing. Um, just, you know, kind of on that note, I think I, my understanding is that the traffic calming uh, topic got uh, tabled from the last uh, city council meeting and just kind of want to put it on the radar here that it's an important, I think, planning commission, uh, you know, topic for all of you all to be engaged in because I think the process involves neighborhoods figuring out their, you know, traffic management needs and, you know, ultimately I think some of these things would come to planning commission, but you know, of course, along those lines, just want to really emphasize, you know, that one of the many aspects of that Clay Street Bridge project is the traffic calming effect of that bridge in its current form. Um, so just want to encourage you. And then as that relates to just the evacuation issues associated that with, the, with that project and all of that, I, I was just in Sonoma County, I will share. And, you know, they just, you know, they ensure that all residents have, you know, a map with all the many ways, all the different routes uh, to kind of, you know, get away if they need to in different scenarios. And, you know, the whole idea is multiple ways uh, in and out. So 
I just want to encourage you as planning, but you know, whatever your role might be with the Fire Safe Council, we need to do evacuation planning. We need to look at this local road system. You know, there's a lot of aspects of it. And you know, it's gonna become a big theme with this Clay Street Bridge project, but it's it's like we're getting laser focused on one aspect of evacuation and there's a lot of other needs and issues with the local road system. So just want to say that. And then um, I guess I just lastly would say, uh, you know, that whole old city hall, taking a look at, at that project and, you know, you know, just the process of, of the steps associated with, you know, roof replacement, shoring, eventual renovation. Um, one of the interesting things that came out of that was just the history of the building. The Historical Society refers to the Emigrant Jane building as the Rolleri building. And, you know, again, just just we just need to embrace the history here and really um, take an interest in it. We don't have a historical advisory committee. And I just want to encourage you all to be thinking about creating a space and a place, and maybe it's even a separate commission. I don't know, but we just don't have a place to deal with, you know, these historical, um, you know, aspects of this city. And so anyway, the Rolleri building. So, you know, the, the bottom line is that the 487 property is on the National Register. 489 is not on the National Register. 487 was listed by, I guess it was a planning commission person um, in 81, Conrad Montgomery. Yeah, we have about 15 seconds. Okay. All right. I just, but so you understand only half of that you know, dual building complex has really been evaluated and looked at for its history and described. Um, so, you know, again, Judith Marvin, who did the work for Friends of Historic Hangtown, looked at it a little bit, but there's a lot more to do. And like I said, um, the Emigrant Chain story is, you know, there's lots of mysteries there. We should understand that. Rolleri, it's getting this label, Rolleri. There's, you know, apparently people are offended calling it mustard and ketchup even though we know that's kind of a popular culture. So there's just, oh, there's so many things. And I just bring this to you because there's nowhere else to bring it to in this town. So anyway, but I, I hope we can really be, you know, doing some work on this historic district. So thank you for the open comments. Thank you. Anyone else? Um, uh, Mr. Chairman, if I can make one quick response to uh, Ms. Champlin. Uh, Jennifer, just letting you know that the finance director did respond to your latest email regarding the refund on the appeal of Cottonwood four and six. Uh, you have uh, the choice of you can come in to City Hall and pick up the check if you like, or we can mail it to you. Okay, great. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, probably mailing is just as easy this week. That'd be great. Great. Thank you. Thank you. My understanding is that the hot dog lobby is quite happy with the term mustard and ketchup. Yeah. Thanks. yeah. Anyone else? Okay, next item is communications um, from staff. Are there any communications uh, commissioners need to be made aware of staff? I believe uh, it was earlier today that uh, Director Rebos did send each of you a copy of the uh, court decree regarding sourdough and company. So. Uh, that has been made part of tonight's, not agenda packet, but in terms of the documents, since it was distributed to you uh, for the public record is now put in and filed under tonight's meeting. Okay. Although I, I don't know if we intend to discuss it in any uh, form, but. All right, anything else? Item number three, site plan review. SPR 90-11-R2, quick serve at uh, 150 Placerville Drive. Mr. Painter, do we have a staff report? Yeah, back on December 1st of last year, the commission conditionally approved the rebranding re of this, uh, the existing Shell station, convenience store with gas pumps to a quick serve branded station. This rebranding of uh, uh, new colors as well as signage. Uh, that has all been installed and completed under uh, a construction permit issued by the Development Ser Services Department and inspected by staff. You know, condition seven of the December 1st approval, the commission requires the applicant to prepare and submit a, a landscape plan for the commission to consider. 
and possible action. And so that's uh, the subject of tonight's request. In addition, condition eight of that December 1st approval uh, requires the recordation of the landscape maintenance agreement. And that would occur uh, after the planning commission approves the, the, the final landscape plan. The uh, exhibit or attachment to tonight's st staff report is the landscape plan prepared and, and proposed by the applicant. The plan modifies the original 1990 landscape plan. The applicant has annotated the plan with the plant schedule as well as annotations using dark text of, of the plant species from the original plant schedule and their locations that, are, that were not present as of this winter but, have, but are intended to be planted as part of this re request approval tonight. The annotations also include proposed replacement of existing street trees that have been aggressively trimmed along the Placerville Drive frontage and replace them with three Chinese pistache. This is the same species that, is, that was originally listed in the 1990 plan. And also there are annotations about the uh, replacement for the sod and lawn, sod or lawn slash lawn that uh, is interspersed throughout the site, primarily uh, at the intersection of Armory and uh, Placerville Drive. However, there are other small uh, portions of la uh, saw lawn and sod uh, at the driveway encroachments on both uh, Armory Drive and uh, Placerville Drive. The commission's authority to review the site plan is codified under city code section 1049. Uh, staff suggests approval. Okay, I, I know that earlier we talked about the use of artificial turf in terms of water savings. We did that with uh, uh, Stancil Toyota, um, Thompson Toyota, showing my age here. Um, has any more thought been given to that or are we still looking for uh, live turf? Uh, on the contrary, at the, at the city is actively, well, maybe not actively is the wrong word, but uh, we want to encourage property owners to, to not use lawn at all, but to replace those plants with a uh, lower water draw drying plant species. And the applicant is proposing at this location, uh, Manzanita to serve that, that purpose, which, okay. which is drought tolerant. It is uh, native and thrives in this area. All right. Um, any questions of commissioners to staff? Mr. Chairman, I have a couple, if I may. <clears throat> Andrew, I, I just want to have clarity on this, on the three bullets. Um, and I asked you about the first bullet earlier today, which I understand, but I still am not clear how this first bullet reads. The annotations on our sheet indicate plant species from the original plant schedule and their locations that are not present as of winter 2021. I, I don't know what, I don't know what that means. Start with that one. Okay. <clears throat> Well, when the rebranding came before you, it was obvious after looking at the site and uh, staff has actually received complaints about the, the extensive amount of pruning that some of the street trees have, have unfortunately uh, been victim to. It was noted that uh, many of the plants have died or are no longer present over the 30 years in which this site was a gas station or has been a gas station. And so the, uh, the old use of a lawn and sod, it was staff's opinion to encourage the applicant and or charge you, you as the planning commission, to perhaps relook at the landscape plan in that regard uh, to maybe come up with an alternative to lawn or sod that uh, uh, really has, is a relic from, from days gone by in terms of water. Okay, so 
So in a nutshell, what what's stated in the plan is is the applicant has gone through and noticed that the species that were called out in 1990, there are many species that are no longer there. Right. No remnant of that of it is still there. There or is there, with the exception of some tree stumps that uh, that I noticed when I was out there. Right. Uh, Oh, and so the solution to that, the solution to that is to is is what exactly? Because it was I saw some annotations on here, but it's still pardon me for being so dense, but it's still not clear how we're going to resolve this first bullet. What's the resolution? Not sure I'm following. What their intent okay. is to, in essence, plant what was originally. Oh, just replant. For. Replant with the exceptions of the what was lawn and yes. replacing the trees and i can't remember now what those trees are but they they are not as what's shown on the 1990 plan gotcha uh, okay. they're flowering plum andrew just for you know i i think i think you might you, that might be it because i that might be what i was told by their landscape person you're right okay. yeah they were plum trees the purple leaf plum trees mm -hmm. right my comments on the other two bullets will be more appropriate for discussion amongst uh, the commissioner. So thank you, Andrew, appreciate that. Okay. <clears throat> Do we have a representative from the quick serve? Chair List, I don't recognize the people that are in the attendee list, whether one of or more of them are part of this item? I don't know. I don't okay. recognize them. Uh, right. Chairman List, I do have some yes. questions. If we could uh, get one of the, the applicant or the applicant's representative, uh, I'd rather hear it from them, what their intention is, uh, clarify some things uh, rather than having Andrew answer for them. So uh, if we could possibly identify who's in the audience to represent uh, you know, the project, I'd appreciate that. But if they aren't raising their hands, I guess we should just uh, move on. I don't wanna uh, spend too much time on that. Mr. Chairman, no one is uh, raising their hand. Okay. okay. <laughs> and let's close, okay, let's, uh, let's see. Uh, is there anyone else in the public that would like to speak to this item? Uh, Mr. Chairman, I have a number 857 requesting to speak. Okay. Go ahead. 857. Hello, Planning Commission. And may I ask your name, sir? Michael Drobish. Okay, go ahead. Hey, um, so not so much about this, but the grass, and I agree that we need to go to low water plantings. Um, for some reason, I never really understood, the city of Placerville banned artificial turf in commercial zones, it's on the books. Um, if you've seen the super high quality product that's available nowadays, I really think that you should consider changing that ordinance and in the city code under your job description as planning commissioners is you can make recommendations to the city council on changing code. Um, maybe you go through some products and you say these are you know specimen a b through whatever are allowed by right if you use those specifically because they are so perfect you can't tell the difference uh, you'll get that beautiful look you'll have zero water use um, you might have the vagrant sleeping on it but that's another story so anyway aside from replanting in the same spot with trees if you have tree stumps in the ground and you're supposed to plant a new tree right on top of that tree stump, it ain't gonna work. It's gonna cost a fortune to get that old stump out. So if they have to move four or five feet, 
That's understood. That's all. Thanks. Hey, Mr. Chairman, could, could I ask uh, Mr. Drobish a follow-up question? Yes, go ahead. Yeah. So hopefully, Mike, you, you can, you're still on the line. Do yes. you have experience, technical contractor experience with artificial turf? No. Okay. All right. Then you're off the hook. Thank you. <laughs> I've okay. seen the product. All right. Anyone else from the public who likes to speak on this, this issue? Okay. Bringing it back to commissioners. Um, discussion. Okay. Um, Chairman List, I'll start off. I, uh, I really struggled with this planting plan. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have an applicant um, or representative, but uh, it was uh, difficult to interpret. Um, the copy that I had was pretty faded, uh, especially the original plant legend, and it would have been uh, very helpful to have a single legend uh, and also have the symbols that they've used, uh, you know, throughout the proposed planting, they um, have put in boulders and, um, and so on. So it, to, just, to, just to make that statement clear to anyone in the audience who is listening, it would make it a lot easier on the planning commissioners to have a, a more succinct planting plan. Uh, I also struggled with it. I think it's a bit over planted and having you know, worked in landscaping uh, for many years, I know that that's something that you do um, to give it a lush look. And also you may be, or the uh, designer may be considering some plant failure so that if you lose a couple plants, you still have a good look overall. I'm not that concerned about the uh, sod that's uh, called out in this particular planting plan if, again, I'm having a hard time uh, reading all of their notes, but I think we're under, well under 2,000 square feet of, of sod uh, throughout the entire uh, uh, project. So that it really is a minimal amount. Um, sod is a little bit cooler. Uh, we're looking at a site that's, you know, this could be an island of, of planting and it is surrounded by concrete and asphalt. Uh, so, you know, it, from a comfort, a, a cool communities perspective, I prefer to have uh, plants that uh, evapotranspire and uh, do whatever we can to kind of break up uh, these heat islands we've got. One more thing I want to put forward to my uh, fellow commissioners for your consideration, a possible amendment. There are um, a total of, <coughs> There are a total of five existing pistache trees that uh, the proponent is suggesting to keep. I did a site visit. Uh, I Actually, I drive by this uh, regularly, this site, I've noticed it. Um, but I did do a site visit when we got this um, project uh, proposed uh, on our agenda. All of those pistache trees have been um, improperly pruned, uh, pollarded. And, uh, pollarding actually is uh, not allowed under our uh, design guidelines. It's specifically called out. Pollarding is a special technique. If you want to pollard a tree, it's a, a regular annual maintenance. Uh, not really applicable. If the, if the proponent said, oh, I want to do that, I, I'm looking for a certain uh, shape of the tree, then I think we could allow it. But this is just um, poor maintenance um, and obviously someone who was just trying to cut back the trees and uh, for whatever reason. So Mr. my- May I ask a question? Uh, just to finish You're up that talking. thought though, uh, these pollarded trees, I would suggest that we uh, ask the project proponent to replace all of them. What was your question, um, okay. Chairman List? You said pistache trees and you're really talking about the plum trees, is that correct? No, I'm talking throughout the planting plan. If you, uh, if you all have your, the site plan in front of you, uh, look along, that's Armory Drive to the south and east of the actual um, facility. Earlier uh, on, you, you were talking about the severely trimmed back trees, and you said, you, you said pistache instead of 
plum? No, uh, no. the plum you... trees are at the front along Placerville Drive, and that's actually clearly shown in the photograph on page right. two of the staff report. Yeah, those are uh, those have been abused. Um, not only um, have they been topped, uh, but they're, the bark is cracking. Those uh, plants are now diseased, and, and they probably will flower for a while, uh, but they're on their way out. But if you look at that picture on page two, uh, imagine looking beyond the gas station, beyond the gas tank and so on, there are several pistache trees that uh, were planted. All of those have been improperly pruned. And what uh, my point here is, in addition to the flowering plum trees that we already described and were called out, uh, my recommendation for your consideration is that we require all the deciduous trees, all the uh, Chinese pistache trees on this site need to be replanted. What happens when you improperly prune them so severely, the trees cannot establish a strong architecture. And so you're looking at limb failure, damage, it's a safety habit or the tree will eventually die. Since they're going to all this work anyway, uh, removing and replanting the uh, pistache trees that uh, they have la labeled as existing, uh, those all need to be pulled out and replaced. Now, uh, Mr. Drowish mentioned that uh, it's difficult to replant right on top of another tree. Um, you know, yeah, uh, if, especially if you have uh, some disease, it's hard to get the diseased roots out, but it can be done. You can grind the stumps uh, and replant. Um, and so that, that is um, my recommendation. Just to finish up my thought on these trees, um, there is a little island at the back of the site plan. Um, and so envision going into that, uh, the car wash facility. It, they call out for an existing uh, pistache tree. When I was out there, I think that's missing. Thank you. Uh, so if uh, you go to the uh, left, please. There is a one, I think that tree is missing and maybe for a good reason. I think it might have been cut down because of uh, the light, uh, the street light that's nearby. And I'm not sure that we really need that uh, pistache tree um, on site. I think we have plenty of trees. So if you go a little bit more to the left, uh, oh, you can see the uh, handicapped parking symbol there. You know, there's a striped um, part. Uh, so that's next to the car wash, yes. Okay, so now you can see that uh, handicapped parking symbol there that is uh, an existing uh, they're calling it an existing pistache tree I think it's missing if uh, I didn't walk the entire site I did uh, kind of do a drive-by and uh, look at it from my car there's a light in there somewhere and it could be that uh, for good reason that it was taken out there's the light um, I'm just not sure that they need to uh, replant I, I think that one for whatever reason died failed was taken out um, but for example, since we're looking at this section, oops, we just went past it. <laughs> if you look at this at the very top, those two existing, it says existing S1, that's uh, their symbol for, no wait, I'm sorry, that's shrubs, T2, two existing. T2 is their symbol for uh, Chinese pistache. Those are two of the trees that have been um, not well pruned. And uh, it's my recommendation that uh, if they want to keep those, that they replace them uh, with new stock. Um, to that end, replacing those trees, um, I, I realize I'm dominating our conversation. I, I think that we should also at one point discuss um, impose it, specifying that they prune the trees properly uh, once they redo this landscape plan. So um, I will take a break and let the other commissioners comment on what I've said so far. I do have a couple other things uh, when we get down to uh, our final recommendation. Thank you. Chair List. Yeah, go ahead, Andrew. Yeah, to clarify uh, or uh, what Member Keeney was talking about in kind of the northeast corner of the lot, um, I, I think this is the tree that, that isn't there now. And I think that was called out to be according to, to the so, schedule as a black pine. Southeast. Uh, that's not the area I was looking at, but yes, I see that they're calling for black pines. 
And uh, as regards that side of the siting plan, I like what they've done. I uh, now, Andrew, you've talked to them. I haven't. Um, I think what they're proposing to do is pull all the black pines that are at the uh, Placerville Drive side of their site. Um, and then all of those larger trees, they're going to then just put right back there where you were showing us. Uh, I think that makes more sense. I think the black pine is a little too tall and I don't think the property owner is going to uh, really like that is that it would block their signage. And I don't think they need to have the big um, black pines at the front. What is the size on those? Uh, it says 20 feet. Um, they just seem to be, uh, Andrew, if you could scroll a little bit more to our left, thank you. So you can see now the three pistache trees that they uh, are going to plant. To the left of that, uh, in that mass planting, there's a bunch of stuff in there. There are pines, there are mugo pines, there are uh, manzanitas, and so, Andrew, what I think they're proposing is just pulling out like the large trees, keeping some of the small trees. I see existing S84, uh, existing, let's see. Yes, so keeping the shrubs, but pulling out the larger trees. I think that's gonna give a, a better look to this. Like I said, uh, and then the large black pines will be at the back of their facility. I think it's a, a good look. Uh, once again, to clarify, their intent of what's shown highlighted in the darker black is what they intend to plant. Okay. As and new. Also, and also they're going to put in boulders there uh, throughout this planting area. That's all new. Uh, that, that is, that's not known to me. Okay. Yeah, unfortunately, we don't have their representative. So, uh, Andrew, I, you know, I won't, uh, <laughs> you don't have to speak for them, but I appreciate you clarifying this as much as you can. Okay, any other commissioners? Yeah, this is Commissioner Friend. Go ahead. So, um, first of all, I support Commissioner Keeney's observation regarding the exhibit. It, it was faculty, in fact, frankly, still is a little bit difficult to follow. Um, I want to talk first, though, about the uh, the sod and the issue of artificial turf and sod versus um, uh, bark, low-growing manzanita and bark. And certainly the low-growing manzanita and bark is um, easier to maintain. Don't have to worry about it going dead. Um, it's already brown. Um, <clears throat> the, 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 the challenge I have with that is that if it's not maintained, the bark gets kicked around and then the dirt gets exposed and then uh, you wind up with, with kind of a muddy mess. So I'm not sure that's necessarily an improvement. The reason I asked about uh, Mr. Drobish about the artificial turf, my question was, how does the artificial turf drain? And I was thinking, we had this conversation, if I remember correctly, when this came to us last time, and it was about a doggy rest area, a doggy walk. I would think actually the bark is probably a better place or, or a better solution for a, a doggy area um, because for those folks that don't clean up after their, dark, their dogs, it's going to show up a lot more against the green than it would against the bark if you follow my meaning. So I don't, I don't know what we want to do with the bark. I guess I could I could support that, but I'm, I, I'm not sure what we want to do there. I, I agree with the observation that the amount of lawn that's being proposed is minimal. And so um, <clears throat> in terms of water usage and all of that, I, I don't think that's a real concern. With regards to the trees, and, I, and I'm still a little bit confused on the, the diagram, but the first thing I'm going to say is I don't think a Chinese pistache would be appropriate on Placerville Drive. They get too large. I love Chinese pistache, don't, don't misunderstand, but I think they can get very large and I worry about actually a site view coming out of the driveway there on the Placerville Drive. I think that could be a real problem. Um, maybe some of the trees we'd considered for downtown like the crepe myrtle or something along those lines might be a more appropriate tree. Uh, and I think crepe myrtle, the other uh, advantage is their roots are not invasive to like concrete. And that's one of the things that we were considering on downtown. Um, 
So those are those are my two uh, Chinese pistache in the back. I don't think that that's an issue whatsoever. I think that's fine. Um, again, it's it's not entirely clear what's new and what's not. Um, but I think it'd be nice to have the applicant here as well. And then finally, uh, I don't recall um, what our purview is <clears throat> from the uh, December 1st meeting, if they were supposed to come back, how much of the original landscaping plan they're entitled to, or is, is our purview to, uh, we can compel them to have a completely new plan. So maybe Andrew, you can answer that question. That's all I have, Mr. Chairman, thank you. Go ahead, Andrew. Uh, I also <clears throat> need to clarify something. Um, perhaps this is more to address Member Keeney, just to share something. Um, I'm looking at this, and I'll share with this with you. This is the street view, an old photo, looks like it was captured uh, approximately two years ago, prior to obviously the rebranding. But I'm zooming in. Can you all see this? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. Um, I believe the property line, if you follow my arrow, is, is about here. Are you oh, seeing my. what I'm talking mm -hmm. about? That's the extent of the landscape plan. All of these trees have nothing to do with this property. They have to do with rail. Oh. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I Andrew, thought I could I... clarify that because I you were talking about trees and I was wondering, well, what what are we talking about? Yeah, I believe these what five or six are on the Rayleigh's property. Wow. You can kind of see you see the 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 difference in concrete to asphalt. I think if you follow that line all the way down here. Oh yeah is is approximately the property boundary and that kind of reflects the old plan the old low growing mm -hmm. shrubs with the exception of of that so i throw that out there for clarification uh in terms of your purview on the site plan since uh, it's really entirely up to you what you guys want to do i, I had one more question mr chairman uh if, if i may following up this this photo just reminded me, following up on uh, Commissioner um, Keeney's uh, question about can we require in the landscape agreement, and Andrew, thank you for the clarification, can we follow up, can we require in the landscaping agreement uh, requirements requirements for pruning and, and or upkeep and, and how they do it, and I'm looking at the low growing shrubs that are clearly encroaching onto the um, sidewalk, right? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so um, making sure that the, the sidewalk is, is kept clear and um, then the pollarding issue. So are those things that we can in fact require in the landscape agreement? That's all I have, thank you. Jeff, yeah, wanna to speak to that? Um, well, just to follow up, Michael, that was exactly uh, something I was going to propose as we uh, got down to our recommendation, um, keeping the sidewalk clear. I, I was uh, going to recommend that we specifically uh, ask the city to, when they draw up the landscape maintenance agreement, uh, I was going to ask them to specifically call out that maintenance practices shall follow those in the city's development or the city's design guidelines with particular attention to tree planting, detail and tree maintenance um, activities or practices. I think we should add, uh, you know, keeping the sidewalk clear. I hate to belabor it, um, but, you know, given what we're seeing in, at this site and at, frankly at others, I think it uh, might get through to the property owner that uh, we are serious about the look of these landscapes. And um, Michael, you had a really good point. I, I noticed that overgrowth in the photo on page two of the, um, I guess that's Manzanita, they've uh, cut it back severely. And as you pointed out over on the other side where they're proposing more Manzanita uh, to replace the sod, we you know, could run into the same problem again. So I think that's a, a good addition to 
uh, the landscape maintenance agreement. If I can make a comment, Mr. Chair, with regards to uh, landscaping of vegetation from an adjoining property onto the public right of way, the sidewalk, uh, we have very specific ordinances that address that. Whenever uh, staff is made aware of that kind of situation, then uh, we, we will pursue a, a code enforcement action against the owner. So that's kind of outside the scope of a landscape maintenance agreement, which is to make sure that landscaping is, uh, is maintained uh, live and healthy in accordance with the adopted plan. Having experience with uh, crepe myrtles, that would not be a tree that I would choose in that location. They are extremely messy. And um, when, they're, when those flowers get wet, <laughs> you have a, a slick mess. <coughs> so, uh, that would not be one that I would recommend changing to. Any other comments from, from commissioners? I wish uh, Les was still with us because he would know what tree to put in there. Uh, I'll just say that my comments were, I don't have the extensive plant background or knowledge that you guys had, but um, I also thought it was a little bit hard to interpret and felt like it did look like a lot. And I also hope or would have liked the applicant to be here to give some of the rationale and the thought processes and the plans with the, um, the species that they picked, the locations, all of the basically the questions that are coming up with us right now. And um, also the, the line of sight in the three different entrances that are around this, I think are really important. And so I would have just liked to hear that a little more detail about um, that that was thought of and that that will be considered uh, long-term. Like we were talking about the height of the trees, how big they are, um, the visibility was a really big concern to me and hard to interpret from the materials that we received. So that would be my feedback. Um, I think it's really hard to make a fully informed decision right now without hearing some of the questions answered directly by the applicant. Okay. Um, would someone like to make a, a motion? I'll throw this out there just because I think there were some common uh, themes here. Um, I. I'm going to move that we actually uh, postpone this until the next regular meeting and staff reach out to the applicant, tell them they, they really should attend so we can ask and ask questions and get answers. And maybe in the meantime, uh, at least I'll, I'll take a look for some uh, tree recommendations. So that, I think that's what I'd like to do. Okay, there's a motion, is there a second? I'll second that. Well, we have a, um, in the design guidelines, um, which I don't have open right now, but there, we do have a list of um, tree species. And I think it would be easy for the uh, applicant to, or the landscape architect to select a, a smaller uh, scale tree. The advantage of crepe myrtle uh, is that they, yeah, they would fit in there. Um, and uh, I actually, given the space, I think, if they wanted to stay with Chinese pistache uh, up at the front, only uh, two, but we have, you know, a good list in our design guidelines. And so I think a, a more um, suitable choice could be easily made by the applicant. Um, Mr. Painter, can we ask, can we send this back to the applicant uh, and just have them revise their uh, planting plan and address some of the concerns or is this, what, what Michael Friend has asked is that uh, we postpone it until they can send a representative. I, um, I know they want to uh, finish this. We want to close out the permitting and uh, move forward with the whole project. But uh, if they could, um, if we could extend to them some of our concerns and comments, perhaps they could resubmit. Uh, is that uh, a more efficient way to handle this? Mr. Chairman, if I might, um, having them come back to us is simply a matter of attending a uh, video conference the way we're doing things, so it's not like they have to travel. Um, and, and certainly uh, they should use uh, our, our planting palette uh, for a tree selection. I uh, completely agree with that. Um, I thought that we had perhaps some other questions, and, and frankly, um, I, I think we need to encourage applicants to engage us. So 
uh, for those reasons, if it's got to, it, you know, if it's going to come back anyway, it, I, I wouldn't see what the harm would be. So, so the question was to me regarding, could you uh, put this back to the applicant to, to either revise the, a plan, prepare that plan and submit it back to us and then to you for at a future meeting. That is certainly under your prerogative. Uh, it, it's probably not realistic though to have them generate that within the time between today and the next meeting. Uh, yeah, I definitely was approaching it as more of a tabling, right, than it is a, an entire re, resubmission or even asking them to redo anything, really. I just think clarity is what we're looking for rather than a, a whole new submission right now, right? Mm -hmm. And, and the, we could we could put a up to sixty day maximum time frame on it, right? Doesn't have to come back at the next meeting. Um, as soon as the applicant's ready, you know, um, within sixty days, boom, we could agendize it and deal with it. That'd be the spirit of my motion. That would be reasonable. Okay, and I think um, also you can convey this to them. They can watch the um, recording of this meeting if they want to take it upon themselves to address some of our concerns that we've all expressed. Uh, that would be totally up to them, but uh, yeah, uh, Mr. Friend and uh, Ms. Lepper, I think you're right. Just having them here uh, to answer our questions, we, you know, maybe we could negotiate it uh, during the meeting. You know, I had a, a student one time that turned a drawing in that I looked at and I said, um, is this the best quality of print that you could get? And do you want people to have, to look at it and see your name and not be able to read the rest of your drawing. And if I was Robert H. Lee and Associates, I would be kind of embarrassed by what they sent out. So my recommendation would be that we send this back, ask them to redo it and submit it within 60, uh, 60 days. We have a, a motion on the, uh, on the floor. Do we wanna change that motion or vote on it? And, Andrew, is the is the sixty day uh, consideration clear enough in the original motion, or do I have to make it a formal amendment? Uh, that's understood by staff. Okay. Okay, then we will vote on the motion. Andrew, may we have a roll call? With the amendment that it be 60 days instead of the next meeting, just for clarification. Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Chair List. Aye. Vice Chair Lepper. Aye. Member Friend. Aye. Member Keeney. Aye. Member Raines. Aye. All right, moving on to item number four, site plan review, SPR 80-06-R, Busy B Child, Care, 2869 Cold Springs Road. Mr. Painter, do we have a staff report? Yeah, tonight the commission is asked to consider a request by applicant Jalinda Haverson of Busy Bee Child Care to change the privacy screen material from the commission approved rust colored plastic slats that would be woven into the chain link fencing and change it to a woven polyester vinyl fabric. And materials are intended to screen the outdoor playground. Uh, there are two playgrounds that were proposed under that use permit uh, at the Child Care Center uh, for that property on Cold Springs Road. The uh, Child Care Center was conditionally granted by the Planning Commission back in September of last year under CUP, Conditional Use Permit 20-03. And the major change to site plan review uh, that site for plan review originated back in 1988, so that number is 8806. Exhibit A of the staff report contains the applicant's request. They provide photos of the existing plastic slats and also photo of the, the proposed uh, Max Flex Blue woven polyester vinyl fabric. A uh, portion of that uh, install has, has is in place right now on uh, one, one of the uh, arrays of, of fencing uh, that faces Cold Springs Road. Uh, it also contains, the exhibit also contains an exhibit showing 
the location of the private privacy screening that would uh, be installed within the site. The applicant feels it would provide a clean look, provide complete privacy for the children, and will block view of activities going on along the street. The blue was chosen by the applicant because they feel it complements the color of the building, which is gray, a grayish tone, and uh, the existing building awnings. They intend also to replace the existing plastic slots with this fabric along the property boundary with the mortuary also. Staff does recognize the privacy and safety concerns by the applicant. The play areas are visible from neighboring uses as well as the, uh, the main streets there that at uh, the, the junction of Cold Springs Road and Perot's Road. The proposed materials would achieve their intent to completely screen the playgrounds. However, in staff's opinion, the proposed blue color and the extent of the proposed placement within the site as shown in the applicant's exhibit would dominate the site aesthetic. Uh, their location and placement would be inconsistent with the compatibility of color and materials under the design criteria under site plan review, section 1049G is in George, number three, and of a similar guideline in chapter six of the city's development guide. Those relevant sections and guidelines are provided on pages two and three of the staff report. Staff reviewed a website that retails this fabric and learned that there are additional colors that are possible these may result in the same visual aesthetic uh, consistency issue, however. And of course, there are alternatives to, to screening and those would be solid wood fencing would certainly be something as well as solid walls, uh, which would be of course much more expensive. Uh, based on staff's analysis, uh, staff does not support the request as it is submitted. Staff recommends the commission disapprove the request after making a finding that the request is inconsistent with the intent and purpose of the landscaping and site treatment, site plan review criteria within uh, planning uh, zoning code 1049G and the guideline as referenced earlier under uh, in the development guide. Chair list and members of the commission, the applicant, Ms. Uh, Jalinda Haverson is in the audience this evening. And that concludes my staff report. Okay. Uh, any questions uh, from commissioners to staff? I have one question. Okay, go do, ahead. Andrew, do we have any idea what the total linear uh, feet are that we're talking about? No. The applicant I, might know. I, yeah. Um, yeah, she may. I, I, I may be able to scale it from a previous plan and get back to you. Yeah, let's, if the applicant doesn't have any idea. Then, yeah, thank you. All right, any other question, uh, commissioner questions to the staff? All right, now we'll open the public hearing portion. We'd like to hear from the applicant. Thanks for having Linda. me. Go ahead. Um, I just wanted to start by apologizing for the miscommunication that we had about the privacy screening that we put around the front play area. Um, when the Excuse me, was Linda. Approved, I guess I have left the detail that it had to be the same. Linda, we're having a hard time hearing you. Can you get closer to your mic or something? But you sound like you're in a tin can. Oh, can you hear me now? Oh, much better. Thank you. Okay, okay. I'll just speak louder. <laughs> Uh, I wanted to apologize for the miscommunication we had when we first uh, uh, put up this privacy screening. Um, when it was a when the proposal was approved, I guess I overlooked that it had to be the same material that was approved back in 1988. Um, like Andrew was saying, our sole intent was um, just for the safety of the children in our care. And I know this wouldn't be an issue if the playground was on the side or in the back of the building, but it's just in plain view of the street and that's our major concern for us. Um, the plastic slats were originally approved back in 1988 and that was 33 years ago. Um, a lot has changed in our city since then. Um, number of homeless has significantly risen in our area. There's just homeless tents just about um, a couple hundred yards down the street on Perot's Road that's very concerning to us. Um, students are out of school and unemployment is high due to this COVID. 
and we have a lot of foot, foot traffic going by the sidewalk on Cold Springs Road, as well as crossing through our parking lot right near the fence. And then Megan's list uh, states that there are 123 sex offenders in uh, just in our zip code alone, 95667. Uh, so that's very concerning. Um, the screens that we will propose to keep up um, are 100% blockage, whereas the privacy flats that were approved um, by the committee um, only provide about 75%. Uh, we realize that the blue screening may not be the most aesthetic um, pleasing to the eye, um, but we hope that the safety of the children will, be, will, will outweigh that. Um, like Andrew said, we did choose the color blue to complement the primary awnings that are on uh, the building already. Um, the company that we ordered it from does provide other colors, um, like a light gray and a white, if that would help. Um, we'd be more than glad to exchange it for a different color. Um, so that's just our main concern is the safety of the, the children with that 100% blockage that that screen provides. Okay. Any questions of commissioners to the applicant? Uh, I did. I was looking at the website of the uh, Fence Max, I believe it was called, and the different options that they had. Um, what was the blue? I understand matching it. Um, did you consider doing like an image that they have the image uploads? there that I've seen around other, um, you know, when they're building like a new apartment complex and they kind of put an image of what the apartment complex will look like ultimately. And I saw, I'm, I'm not extremely experienced with this stuff, but that as an option, um, I don't know if that's 100% blockage when you put an image and everything, but I was just curious if you consider doing something like that um, to make it kind of the 100% blockage, but also a little bit more aesthetically interesting. Like an image on the screen where you put like your company's logo or something? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I, I mean, in my mind, when I sort of thought of it, it was like images of trees or, you know, something really relevant that would be kind of interesting for the kids to look at, make them feel like they're not, I mean, frankly, within a tarp is kind of how it makes me feel with the blue, like just kind of it looks temporary to me. Um, and so I thought the green, even the solid green would be maybe just a little bit more in line with the surrounding landscaping, or um, if the image would be a potential, you know, kind of medium where it gives the privacy, but kind of keeps it interesting optically. Go ahead, Barbara. Well, as a child development specialist, I really do concur that you don't want the children looking out at the street and other people, and you don't want those other people looking in at the children. So I do concur with changing the uh, slats. I do think the blue is a little bit garish, and maybe uh, I would recommend a, a more muted color. Mr. Friend, go ahead. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I think we're all in concurrence that uh, we agree with the safety aspect of this, and I think staff even acknowledged it as well. Um, I asked a question earlier, uh, Ms. Haverson, if uh, you knew what the total uh, linear feet that you're talking about is. Yeah, Andrew has his hand up, I'm sorry. I, I do, I do. Yeah, based on the, the plan, well, you can't see it because of my background on my screen here, but the, the site plan that came before you back in September, I, I have it on my desk here. And using that scale from it, um, based on the exhibit, the approximate lineal extent of that screening would be a little over 450 feet. Okay, thank so, you. So that includes, I imagine be, that yeah. includes the, the side adjacent to the mortuary. Okay, thank you. It's, and so I imagine it'd be clearly prohibited to do a standard fencing or anything along those lines. Um, I like, um, well, that's all I have for questions. I'll come back and, and circle. Thank you very much. I have just a couple comments. Norwood. When I first saw it, I thought, oh, they've put up temporary blue tarp waiting for their fencing to come in. And as it sat there longer and longer, I realized that's the, the, uh, uh, the, the final product. And, and I, I just don't feel that the blue fits into our community um, in, in a way that, that you think of the, the, the foothills. Um, 
the the other issue I have is the uh, total blocking out. It also means that um, it's a curiosity thing. When something's closed off like that, somebody walking by goes, "Gee, I wonder what's behind that fence." We do, uh, I don't know if they're planning on some kind of a sign. There is no sign right now, um, but um, that would that would give me the impression that someone might try to climb on the fence to see what's behind the fence. Um, I know when I was a kid, I did a lot of that. Um, anyway, um, the other thing is, it is a nice canvas. And I'm sure with our uh, graffiti artists in the world, uh, that at some point you're gonna be hit with graffiti. And what a, what a wonderful long space that would give for a graffiti artist about 11 o'clock at night on some, some weekend. Um, so I'm, I'm concerned about that. Um, as I thought about this, and I didn't have time to look at it today, is there a possibility that um, they make a paint product that would adhere to that vinyl? Um, I, I've, I've seen them advertised, so I, I, I think they're there, where you could change the color without removing that, leaving it the blue on the backside, changing it on the, on the, uh, the outside. Uh, and then the other thing is breaking up the total uh, longevity of the long that fence with some kind of plantings, um, some plants along, you know, that would hide part of the fence and grow into the covering it instead of looking like it's you're trying to hide something, um, make it a backdrop for for some landscape. Uh, I I would not be in favor of approving um, the use of that material on all 400 and whatever feet. Any other questions or comments to the applicant? All right, I'll bring it I, back to the... I, I, I will add something just yes. for the sake of discussion. I, I've seen this done in other locales, but uh, periodically it's done, what I'm about to tell you, during or uh, yeah, during the process of like a construction project where temporary fencing is installed and people hang signs on the exterior of that. Maybe in order to hide some of the blue, maybe uh, perhaps a mural of some sort or a series of murals or that kind of thing may, may break up that color, uh, still allow the color, but, but be somewhat screened by, by something, by a panel that's attached to if you're following me, attached to the fence on the exterior side with the blue on the interior. Uh, but that's <laughs> that's pretty complicated, I understand, but um, I, I hope that makes sense. That's I've seen that done. Yeah, I'd also thought of, of maybe uh, getting with the um, uh, Art Association here in, in, in Placerville and seeing if uh, they would want to come in and, and do some type of a presentation to you in terms of, of a mural painted on on that after you change it from blue. But anyway. <laughs> All right. Mr. Chairman. Yes. If, if I may, and it's really your comments that are spurring me to uh, uh, mention this to the applicant. Um, and as I said in my comments, I totally understood the safety concern um, and and the lack of 100% privacy that the slats provided. But now I'm weighing that against the issue of, of graffiti uh, tagging and just the massive canvas it presents. So to the applicant, I'm going to ask you, it, it seems to me that when when the children are there, you have staff there. And so there's, it would, it would be not, it'd be difficult for an opportunity for vagrants and whatnot to be hanging out while the place is occupied. And so I'm, I'm going to ask you to, you know, I, I'm sure this is why you wanted to get rid of the slats. And it makes sense. I get that. But there's so much surface area here. I do think it screams to do something to me. 
And you can put the name of your business and, and whatever, and we'll have to talk about that because I think you might run afoul of sign regulations. I don't know. Um, and even if we would put a mural or something, I still think it runs the risk of being defaced, particularly since it's out there by itself when it's dark. So I'm going to ask you if, you know, if you would be willing to reconsider and going back to the slats, because I'm beginning to think that maybe that is the best compromise between the safety on one side and the property vandalism, the attractive nuisance component it might bring up. So I'm just going to ask that. Yeah, we are we are totally okay with um, whatever you guys want us to do. We'll take down the uh, the screening tomorrow if we need to. Um, but what about if we put the a different color screening on the inside um, and maybe the slats on the outside? I know that's double the cost, but <laughs> or just the screening on the inside. I mean, we didn't want the kids ruining it, but like you said, the transients might ruin it on the outside too. So. Yeah, I, I don't think, uh, I, I don't want to speak for staff or the other commissioners, but I think if you met the requirement of the slats on the outside, what you did on the inside would be outside of our purview. Um, and I, I'm not asking you to go through that amount of, of expense, but I, I really think, and the more I think about this, I, I think the slats are the best solution here. So would you guys agree if we put the kept the blue but moved it on the inside and then put like a white or a gray slat. I know you had approved the rust color and that almost is another eyesore in itself. Maybe approve another color slat and put the blue on the inside. With the white slat with the blue in the background, it would have a real striped effect. Um, I, I don't know. I. Chair, Chair Liss, before we get too far down the road, uh, we technically haven't opened up this to the public. We have a couple people who do want to, okay. members of the public who want to speak let's, to this item. So Let's do that. Let's open it up to the public and then we'll come back. Pierre, you're on mute. Uh, we have, Mr. Chairman, we have a Shannon Roberts wishes to speak. Hey, Shannon, go ahead. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, go ahead. Okay, um, so I am Jalinda's partner. So um, I, I really like some of the ideas that you guys were throwing around um, there. I wish I could have interjected before <laughs> too, but um, I really like the idea of, you know, maybe, maybe making a um, mural or like, um, Leper said, um, like the, it just being um, a screened into the um, material. So it's just pre-ordered that way, or like somebody coming out and painting it. I don't know um, paints that would adhere to that really well. I think it would something, if you painted it, it would be, um, it would chip and just come off easily. But if it was like made into the screening, like that commute, computer imaging stuff. <laughs> I'm not familiar, savvy with that stuff, but um, I know you could do that. Like you said, I never thought of that before. And then also I, I liked the idea of maybe putting some plants. I love, um, I love the nature and um, bringing in some aesthetics to that. And um, we plan on doing that on the inside. There's no reason why we couldn't put a few plants, you know, along the outer edge. And I think that would alleviate that that stand out ish and also the concern for the graffiti um, because it wouldn't be just a um, blank slate there would be you know um, bushes or, or, or whatnot I'm not sure off of the top of my head what we would plant there but um, that would be something maybe we could look at too that's um, about okay. all I have in this um, Anybody has any other questions or comments? My only recommendation would be to go back to the manufacturer of the product and ask them if there is a paint that will adhere to that. I'm, I'm almost sure there is. Uh, they make paints adhere to just about anything that, that you can imagine. So I'm sure that they have ran into this uh, 
situation before. Um, thank you, Shannon. Is there anyone else? Uh, Mr. Chairman, we have a uh, number 857 wishing to speak. 857, go ahead. Good evening, Planning Commission. Go ahead. Michael Drobish again. So the blue really stood out at me as I've driven past this multiple times lately, and I thought just that is out of place completely obscures the building that they're saying they're trying to pull the colors off of in a complimentary way. Um, it's unfortunate that they already spent money on this product, um, but speaking to the product. So if it's a solid sheet, it's on the outside of chain link, it really reduces the ability for somebody to climb. Um, I do like the, the rows of barbed wire at the top in one of the photos. Um, it did scream at me what's in there. The first thing I thought was, oh, great, there goes another pot farm. You know, there's a pot farm behind that solid fence because I see it all around the county. Um, so I'm not a fan of the blue. It's out of place. Uh, I do like either a wood look brown, tan, or a deep green. Uh, the slats can be painted. Then they say you can still look through them. They could put a uh, black netting on the inside to really reduce that down. Uh, the police might want to be able to look through the fence and not have to stand on their car and look over the fence to make sure something nefarious isn't happening in the yard. I agree that while the children are there, there are adults there, um, but after hours and what you wake up to in the morning, it might be a different story. Uh, plants, I believe that's all hard packed and paved, would have to be in containers. That means special watering systems and care. I would like to see, uh, agree, graffiti is a, that is a graffiti target, it's so quick. Um, I would like to see vines growing on it to break it up, but I think vines on fences were outlawed due to fire concerns from city council. Um, and the question of cost, it's unfortunate they already bought this product, at least some of it. Um, to do in wood is gonna have a cost. You can put wood on that chain link type pipe system. It's not a problem. Uh, supplies are sometimes hard to get. But the color, the color really just does not fit. About 20 seconds, Paul. That's all. Compare the cost of um, a sheet vinyl, for lack of a better word, versus a wood system that's going to last 15, 20 years. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Any other callers? Uh, no more callers, Mr. Chairman. Okay. We'll close the public hearing portion, bring it back to commissioners. Comments, questions of the applicant, of staff. So, uh, Mr. Chairman, I'll, I'll just make a couple of observations. Um, one, even if we were to find, or if the applicant were to find a, a paint material that they could repaint the color, I think the graffiti issue still remains. It's just a really broad, long, flat canvas, I think, as we've identified. If we, if they, they go a planting route, I think uh, Mr. Drobish is absolutely correct. We'd have to have, the applicant would have to have uh, plants in containers, and that's going to lead us to irrigation and possibly a landscape maintenance agreement. I don't know. Staff can speak to that. Um, it seems to me that if they were to uh, put slats in on the outside, I'm not sure that we have a purview in what happens on the inside, whether it's uh, white slats with, with the blue on the inside or brown or black or whatever it happens to be. Um, and, and frankly, I, I would be inclined to pursue that, that compromise. Uh, it's in the staff report that, uh, uh, red slats with blue vinyl 
uh, fabric mounted is okay. And I think the amount um, that you can see through, I don't, I'm not sure that the blue would be that, um, that negative of an issue with, with the white slats, if that's what they wanted to go with. So those are just my observations. Thank you. Okay. Any other commissioners? Someone like to present a, a motion? Sure. Uh, Chairman List, I'd uh, yes. like to move that we uh, we disapprove uh, the request. Um, essentially, as the way it was stated on page three of the staff report, um, finding that uh, this uh, is um, I'm sorry, this project is inconsistent with the intent and purpose of the landscaping and site treatment site plan review criteria contained within uh, PZC 10-4-9G guideline under chapter uh, 6A11 of the development guide. And I think that uh, as, just as an aside, uh, the applicant has heard a lot of uh, possible options and it's, um, you know, there are a lot of things that can be done to break up the monolithic appearance of the uh, material. And uh, so, you know, they have a lot that they can consider. So that's my motion. I'll second it. I have a question of staff, if I might, Mr. Chairman. Go ahead. Um, Andrew, <clears throat> uh, assuming we were to disapprove the request as submitted, is the applicant obligated to using a red slat or could they, as they uh, mentioned, use a white slat or props, perhaps some other color? Well, the, the approval goes back to the red slat. So a color change, that would be a change to the site plan. Could we manage that action here? Uh, that I might need to talk with Director Rivas. I, I don't believe the, the color of the slat is in question tonight. It's the replacement of all the slats with this fabric material, that, which happens to be blue. But I, certainly we are talking about the exterior appearance at the end of the day. That's really what we're talking about. Um, I would be far more comfortable uh, supporting the motion as presented um, if we allowed the applicant um, the discretion then uh, to choose a color slat that would be that would be appropriate, um, and they, they so I'm just going to kind of leave it there. Kind of like to have a definitive answer as to whether or not that's possible. I have seen the white slat through chain link fence, and it eventually turns a kind of a, a dirty gray. Uh, that may be something they want to take into consideration that the the red seems to hold or the I, I wouldn't call it red I'm a more of a rust color uh, mm -hmm. seems to hold its color better than than the white. I think that's a really important uh, consideration. So chair list member friend and the rest of the commission I'm, I'm looking at the description of the agenda item which is uh, item number one on your agenda tonight. The specificity I mentioned earlier does not come into play until you actually read the staff report. However, the submittal back in September and what the commission granted its approval on was related to the red slats because they were common to the, slat, the slats that are currently separating the mortuary use with this particular site. So, uh, Director Rivas, I'm kind of putting you on the spot here. Based on the re relative generic language on the agenda, would we be running afoul as to changing the slat color under tonight's request? I would think um, that due to the nature of the broad way in which it's written, I would think as long as the Planning Commission can make a finding of, of consistency with the development guide, 
and the design criteria that we should be fine. That would be my opinion. Thank you. And thank you. And because as I read this, it, it does kind of say generic privacy screen, changes to privacy screen materials, which could be almost anything. And, and I do say this to the applicant, uh, remember what uh, the chairman said in terms of over time, what happens to the white. So, um, you know, I'm sure there's other colors that would probably work. And I, and I do think the, the rust color is, is actually attractive. And uh, uh, that dark color with blue also works pretty nice. I think you'll find it attractive. I wish I had a brown tie on right now. You'd be able to see it. So, all right. Thank you uh, to staff for that. And thank you, Mr. Chairman. Anything else from commissioners? Okay. A little, I'm sorry, uh, Travis. I'm a little bit lost about where we landed on what we're sort of voting on now at this point. Um, well, the motion on the table now is to, in essence, disapprove the request based on the outline that staff has provided in the staff report, making the finding that it's not consistent as specified. A second was uh, raised by Chair List. So I have not heard an amendment to that motion yet. So, so I would be prepared actually, uh, Amy, to make a subsequent motion um, that would say after our action that the, um, the item was agendized this evening in such a way to allow the applicant to choose colors other than the red slats if they desired that that or or maybe more specifically that they're not bound they're not necessarily bound but i want to get the language on this correct that the language of the as we discussed the language uh as presented in the agenda item leaves open the opportunity for the applicant to choose an alternative color to the red slat which was approved way back that I, I will make that motion and I, I'm hoping that in the spirit of what we're trying to accomplish, the commission would go along with that. Then we're, we're not at a loss if, if that they don't, but I hope they would. So we're kind of landing on the slats being the acceptable uh, material right now. Unless they're obligated, they're obligated to the slats mm -hmm. since we're disapproving a change from the slats. Mm -hmm. So they're obligated to the slats because that's what was approved originally. That's my understanding. And if they decided to, for example, look into alternative um, designs on something more close to the vinyl, would they be allowed to bring that back to us um, as a new suggestion? Or I guess I'm just trying to get an idea if we're locking them into the slats for good or if they still have options to explore, like say if they want to explore a wood fence, for example, um, are they able to then come back to us to discuss that again further? Did that make sense? They'd have to bring it back, I think. That'd be my understanding. Yes. Be a new item. The, yeah, a new item. That would likely be a new application fee uh, due to the time spent to evaluate that new request, the public notice the requirement that would be required of that new item, new image, new concept, new material. But yes, that is possible. So our action tonight uh, if we um, disapprove this request, um, we're not locking them into doing, uh, wait. We're not locking them into red. We're not locking them in. They could come back with a different request to us, or well, they, they could choose either, to go. With the slats. They could either Is move right? forward. In, in my view, they could either move forward with, with slats of a color, of a, of a color red or a different color. They would have that option. They're obligated to slats. We're not locking them into color. And nothing precludes them from saying, we don't want slats, we want something different, but that's got to come back to us for specific review. Mm -hmm. That's my understanding. Okay. And, KSB and all of that. So, I mean, but if, if they were to put up bright blue slats under this motion, would that be allowed? Good question. No. Probably not. It's what I understood of what Michael just said, they're allowed to. Yeah, I, I think that's, or that's a really good color point. Without coming back, which um, again, we could end up with 
bright blue slats, right? So we're kind of back at square one. So I'm just really trying to get some clarity and also yeah, I think that's a good point. Thank you. Yeah, also to be sensitive to not, if it, we've had a, a kind of like the last topic, we've had a lot of discussion here that have brought up some ideas and some potential alternatives and I'm hesitant to stick them with a whole new application and fee without the potential to maybe explore some different options. Um, I certainly, I agree that the, the blue vinyl as it stands is not gonna work, but I guess I'm just trying to get some clarity on where this puts the applicant uh, with regards to options, with regards to fees coming to come back, all of that. Um, Mr. Chairman, as we've oh, done, I, I, I think those are really good points, Amy, very good points. Um, as we have often done in the past, rather than making an applicant return uh, to us specifically, they're allowed to go approach staff. And, and, and you know, staff can say, no, we don't wanna be involved at this level. But um, certainly we understand the blue and, and pink and maybe some other colors of the rainbow would, would not work. Um, but at the same time, we're not gonna necessarily lock them into the red if the applicant wanted to deviate from the red, and I would suggest that they bring it to staff. And if staff looks at it and says, that does not meet our design guidelines, you'll have to take that back to commission. Um, we could approach it that way. And or if they wanted to do some different material or different options, as you're suggesting, I'm pretty sure that has to come back anyway. So they could they could look at this and say, okay, how much how much effort do we want to do here? Red's okay, rust, whatever, or maybe some other color. I'm not sure white would be if offensive, but um, anyway, they could bring that to staff and then staff could make the determination as to whether or not they felt it needed to come back to us. And so maybe staff could say, <laughs> no, or yeah, we could work with that. Okay, we, we have a motion and a second. I think what we need to do is to vote on the motion. And if it is defeated, then we come back and look at an alternative to that. Okay. Okay. I'm, I'm really sorry, but could you just re, uh, so we are, the motion is that we deny the blue and improve that they can have red slats in the chain link right now, unless they return to us with a different suggestion. I would prefer we use rust, not red. Uh, with apologies, yeah. Because uh, they make the a real bright color, color. They make a real bright red, don't they, Barbara? <laughs> if, if, the, if the motion to disapprove is approved, then what is required of the applicant is to use the rust slats as their screening material that defaults back to the original approval. As currently there is no modification approved by this body for an alternative fabric or color or, or material. Okay. All right, Mr. Painter, would you call the roll? Chair List. Aye. Vice Chair Lepper. I'm gonna abstain. Member Friend. Aye. Member Keeney. Aye. Member Raines. Aye. All right. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to introduce a motion. And then my motion is, uh, should the applicant decide to use a color other than what was originally approved uh, in, in the site plan review, uh, that they bring back their color selection uh, to staff uh, for concurrence that it comports with the design guidelines, and if not, staff will direct them to come back, return to the commission. Is there a second? I just would like to have a clarification. Uh, Michael, Could you that's- second uh, so we could have discussion? Oh, okay. Okay. Thank Is you for that. Second? Now. You need a second? I'll second it. Okay, now we can have discussion. Okay. Okay, I'd like a clarification of the motion. Um, Michael, you're saying that they can uh, use the slat material. The color could be just approved or disapproved by staff. Yes, I, I, think our, I think our prior discussion 
there was there was agreement that um, the way the agenda item was written, it was generic enough that uh, as the, the, the slat material did not have to necessarily be the exact color that was originally improved, that they could in fact choose a different color. But Commissioner Lepper raised a very, very good point that well, what if they went with blue? And so my motion is simply requiring the applicant uh, if they want to choose a color different that they bring it back to staff to take a look at and and staff can let them know whether or not that color comports with the design guidelines or not and if and if the staff says no that's mm -hmm. fine that's not, that doesn't look to be a problem then they can go on their merry way if if they choose something like bright blue or, or you know whatever then it would have to come back to us that's the intent of my motion. Or if they choose a, another alternative uh, among the range that was discussed, if they want to go with another material. Oh, absolutely. If they, yeah, exactly. absolutely. Because, yeah, they would absolutely have to do that, whether we pass this okay. motion or not. Thank you for that clarification. Okay. We're in order. We, we have a second. Um, Mr. Painter, do we need to open this up to public comment? Uh, I don't have an answer for you at this particular moment. I let me let me ponder that. I, I do want to say something in consideration of this last motion. And I yeah. I have I have the uh, code section in front of me, the site plan review code section ten four nine, subsection P, which is the major change section, which has often come up recently about changes to existing site plans. An example of a major change uh, appears to be colors that are not, uh, which, which deviate from existing colors or which propose colors other than earth tones. So this is to tell the commission and the applicant that any proposed change in color from red or rust Rust is an earth tone color, I think I, we could all argue. Uh, a deviation from earth tones, uh, staff will not support this. It would have to come to you guys for a decision on it. So. And, and so it also says, or if I remember, if I heard your reading correctly, I think actually, Andrew, so my motion, I think, actually provides protection for the applicant, meaning if uh, uh, Ms. Haverson they say, okay, well, we'd like to go with this color. We think it's pretty earthy. And then, so they would have to bring it to staff only because it deviates from what was originally approved, period. Then you would have to look at it and say, that would be a major change, as opposed to them going ahead and doing it, putting it up, and then somebody says, ah, that's a major change. So this, I think my motion, certainly the intent, protects them that way. So if they want to choose a different color than what was originally approved, take it to staff and the staff can make a determination as to whether or not it constitutes a major change. And if it does, you have to come back to us anyway. Okay. Any order? Order? questions on the motion? Well, one, one of the question earlier was, is this open for public uh, discussion? Um, uh, do you have any thoughts on that, Director Reba? Well, the public hearing was open and closed, and now the Planning Commission is making deliberations. So unless they're really proposing that is far outside of the realm of what's being considered, um, the Commission is under no obligation to reopen the public hearing. Okay. Point of order. I don't think you can call a point of order, Michael. <laughs> if I was sitting in the room, I could. Uh, All right, then we will uh, ask Mr. Painter for a roll call vote. Chair List. Aye. Vice Chair Lepper. I'm just going to abstain again for right now. Thank you. Member Friend. Aye. Member Keeney. Aye. Member Raines. Aye. Okay. Thank you. 
this and all decisions made by the planning commission may be appealed to the city council within 10 calendar days. Um, matters from commission to staff and staff to commission. Mr. Painter, do you have anything for us? Or Mr. Rebus? Uh, I, I do have a, just a, an agenda item regarding the most recent uh, questionnaire results. Okay. It's not numbered, but it is part of the agenda tonight. Um, what I was going to do, and I'm, I'm now not going to do it, but uh, just because we received quite a few last minute written responses to that questionnaire, uh, I could briefly go over, I mean, we, I'll, I'll, let, me, let me explain it this way. We have an online version, which was an option for people who wanted, wanted to participate in this survey related to uh, general issues of the city related to, there was, there was um, information about uh, specifically to housing element components, such as uh, fair housing questions, et cetera. And because there were two options, currently we, the online option, I can show you the results of, but the, the responses we received in writing we are, a staff member is putting them into the system in order for us to aggregate them later. And so that has not been completed, but I can tell you that we have uh, received as of, as of uh, today, because the mail of course takes a little time to get to us. Um, looks like we have approximately 150 mail-in mm -hmm. responses and 66 online responses. Um, so, I mean, if, if you'd like to, to look at the responses we've received on the online version, I can, I can share the screen. It is available on our website now, so uh, you could follow along if we want to do this now. Again, I, I don't have anything scripted to or any analysis to, to go over with you, but I can share with you where it is. And I can address a question that a member friend had with staff. I believe his question was related to the, uh, our local re city arena numbers, our, our, uh, our regional uh, housing related uh, units that during this next housing element cycle, the city needs to plan for in terms of zoning, uh, site, site specific, et cetera. Uh, that information is on our webpage related to this update to the general plan housing element. And if you guys are not familiar with where that's located, which is also a, a page with a link to the uh, previous questionnaire and once again the questionnaire results from the most recent questionnaire so you could look at both we will have uh, a soon have an update for and then try to incorporate or or blend both of the online version and the write-in versions into either one or we might have to do it in two separate batches but um, anyway that page I can share my screen here So on the, the City of Placerville website, if you take your cursor and hover over the word government, a drop down menu occurs and you want to go to development services and then the planning division. Mm -hmm. And on the left side of the screen, the panel has various things that can be uh, looked at in one of the section or one of the items is the housing element update. So if you click that, that'll be the dedicated page to to the housing element update where we alert the public on recent activity. Questionnaire results is where we're gonna, we're gonna do that. Uh, and we have done that. And then to address Michael's question, if you scroll down on this page where it describes the housing element, why it's needed, why it's required, and then about two thirds to uh, you know, three quarters of the way down, is the section regarding what is a regional housing needs assessment or the RENA. And that's where we have a table of the regional housing need 
uh, allocation for the city of Placerville. Um, I can tell you we're working on the draft housing element update uh, currently. And uh, staff has identified, I, I can share this with you, staff has identified adequate parcel area and lots to accommodate all of the income levels that the RENA uh, numbers uh, specify that we need to plan for. So unless something were to happen unbeknownst to me, it does not appear that the city needs to rezone property specifically to address any unmet need. Uh, as Director Rivas and I have, have, have mentioned to you in, in the passing, the city is anticipating actually creating some more inventory of, of lower income housing zoned properties. And the city has received some grant monies for the preparation of environmental analyses for that type of, of uh, project. And uh, so once again, we do not, do not anticipate rezoning specifically for this housing element, but we do want to increase an inventory of housing for a broad spectrum of, of our income levels. And uh, we do have, uh, we want to have a little bit of padded uh, lots or acreage to accommodate that, that, lower, that lower income threshold. So I'll leave it up to the commission. Would you like to look through the preliminary results we have for the online version or, or would you just like to, you know, peruse that on your own? Andrew, this is Michael friend, Mr. Commission, Mr. Chairman. I hope it's okay if I comment on this. Go ahead. I, I just want to thank Andrew for doing that. And the reason for my inquiry was actually spurred by an editorial in the, in the Democrat. Uh, uh, Mr. Walters often has an editorial in there. And one of his editorials was talking about uh, potential uh, challenges for cities uh, meeting their, their requirements. And so I just thought it would be a, a good idea to find out where we were at. Thank you. I have a question, um, Mr. Painter. Do you state somewhere on that uh, page what our uh, AMI is? Uh, that's the, uh, the median income. Uh, the arena numbers are uh, pegged to that. Um, <clears throat> is that stated somewhere on there? I just, uh, as we were scrolling through, I didn't see it. Uh, yeah, the good catch. I I do not see that. No. Uh, but that's, that's just a that's, good that's, point of reference. If uh, yeah. somehow we could insert that, and uh, so we know what uh, exactly incomes we're talking oh, about. For I, I stand corrected. I I do. It's right below the the table. Okay. We just didn't it, scroll that far down yet. Yeah, it's not defined, but I, I think it's kind of self-evident. The area in question is the is El Dorado County. It's based on county median income. The area okay. in this case is El Dorado County. Thank you. Okay, Barbara. Are you anticipating getting any more surveys? Or if this is the end of the collection, because there was a deadline, I think, of February 12th. Yes. I would like to discuss it, or I would like to look at the survey, but I don't want to look at it until it's done. Okay. Until you've got the totals and you've got the percentages. <clears throat> so are you anticipating getting more? Uh, well, like, like I mentioned briefly, I believe I mentioned earlier, we did receive, I think, 15 or 16 more of the mail-in version. And uh, my coworker here, Ar Aris, needs to input those into a shell survey, which we've run parallel to it. It's strictly for inputting the handwritten responses. Okay. So uh, we have another staff member who will be looking at for those two questionnaires to see if we can merge the data. Okay. Um, that's beyond kind of my pay grade. I, I, I'm hoping someone can, can figure that out. If it can't, then we'll have to just total, you know, from both and, um, Go from there, Barbara. Thank you. Yeah. But yes, I can bring that back to you. Okay. Anything else from staff? Uh, Mr. Chairman, just uh, in brief, um, 
I went ahead and I forwarded to all of the planning commissioners the uh, court uh, the court decision on the lawsuit that was filed by the Friends of Historic Hangtown seeking to overturn the city's decision to approve of a conditional use permit and site plan review for the Sourdough and Company, which is a formula business. Uh, the petitioners were basically, the basis of their challenge was that the, the, the city exceeded its um, authority by approving the formula business that was inconsistent with both the, the city's general plan and the zoning ordinance. Uh, the court disagreed. Um, I highly recommend you read the court's court's decision, I, th I found it very informative, very educational. They methodically went through the thought process that the planning commission went through, that the city council went through, and I just want to you know, applaud the planning commission for uh, making the appropriate findings, and the court found that those findings the city made uh, were um, in uh, basically in substantial conformity uh, with, with the record. And uh, uh, we should all feel good that, that a good decision was made. And I think you'll see that. It was also interesting too, because a lot of what the petitioners tried to make a claim is that there's an error in the um, land use zoning matrix that, that is uh, located within our development guide. Um, staff feels that that is a, um, I would look at that as a uh, just a handy guide uh, for the general public or for users uh, to determine at a quick reference whether or not a particular land use is consistent with the zone district they're planning on developing. And the petitioners tried to make a claim that because fast food, um, a fast food restaurant uh, was shown not to be permitted within the central business district, uh, that that's where then the city ran afoul of approving it uh, incorrectly uh, because it wasn't um, in conformance with that matrix. Uh, the court found that the matrix had no force of law. That is, it is just that, a reference uh, guide for the public. We will correct, staff will correct it. Uh, we still think it's a useful guide, but uh, we would, uh, we were looking, we will be looking at just putting some footnotes on the matrix that if anybody is using the matrix that they are to uh, consult with the actual ordinance uh, before making any land use decision making. But again, uh, you know, the court uh, ruled in our favor in that point. And they also made a special footnote that uh, the court also uh, didn't feel that the sourdough sandwich shop was even a fast food restaurant. So again, if the, for, for those of you commissioners that haven't read it yet, do read it. It's, it's a really good, good read and congratulations to all of you. Thank you. Yes, uh, and congratulations to staff. You uh, helped guide us through a very difficult decision um, and, uh, but it was made easier by having the uh, facts plainly stated in the staff report and uh, also we you know can refer to the general plan I think uh, another thing I'd like to say about that decision it's is plain language I don't know if all of you have read it yet but uh, as Pierre said it's it's uh, informative and unlike some court decisions I found it uh, you know fairly easy to follow uh, what the uh, what the judge uh, was saying and uh, that uh, footnote I thought was uh, very important uh, just to kind of underscore uh, how the court was viewing uh, and agreeing with the way we interpreted uh, the facts of the case. So uh, thank you, Pierre, and thanks to the staff for your hard work on that. You're very welcome. Thank you. Any other questions for staff? Uh, just one, Andrew, as we went down the agenda today, uh, the chairman went uh, consent calendar, roll call consent calendar, items pulled, items of interest to the public, and then he went to communications. I didn't have communications on my agenda that I picked up. And I was wondering if it was just omitted on everyone's or was it omitted on mine? The chairman was clearly uh, on point and uh, asked for communications. I must admit that I, uh, I have an old agenda that I pull that I use the outline for each time and plug in. 
and you will have the opportunity uh, shortly to uh, elect another <laughs> chair that doesn't do that if that's your choice. <laughs> okay. And then do we have another meeting? <laughs> yeah, yeah, sometime in the future. Uh, no, uh, to be serious, the we, we are anticipating an item that if submitted this week, it, it would be a, a zoning interpretation application, uh, which most of you have not been involved with, with the exception of perhaps um, member friend and member list. Uh, but it, it has not been submitted yet and it will require a public hearing uh, because you would be asked to to consider whether a use is compatible with the existing zone in which the location is involved with. Uh, the, uh, the, other, the other thing, we, we could have a meeting just to handle the election of officers. If, if you want, we could discuss, uh, you know, the, the bylaws, which are always a, a topic of, of great interest by the commission. Uh, <laughs> we could do that anyway if if uh, if we wish to, um, but at this point, I, I don't have any public submitted items that are in my hand ready to go for the the first meeting in in March. Um, uh, Chair List, there is a a member of the public who have raised their hand during this agenda item. Caller 857. Okay. Go ahead, Mike. 857, go ahead. We're not hearing him. He's muted. Okay. Good evening, Plan Commission. Um, in the staff report on the housing element update, I had great heebie-jeebies when staff said we want to pad our numbers for rezoning of low income. So I just wanted to register that with everyone. Uh, I think the numbers are what they are. If you need to zone for X number of housing units, then you find the parcels to fit that. To pad it makes me a little uneasy. I would also like to register my point of order on the previous item of the daycare fencing. Um, it was very convoluted, but the first motion to deny, I believe met with a majority yes which is a denial and a one year return, right to return for application. So hopefully I got that wrong. Hopefully somebody put in an amendment that I didn't hear. Um, I like the way it was going with the fence, give the property owners the right to come back with something more palatable, but that was my concern was that the motion was voted yes to deny, and that would have ended the conversation, and I hope that is not the case. Thank you. Thank you. All right. I did have a couple of questions, um, and I just want to bring this to the attention of the staff. Uh, and if you aren't prepared to answer, we can take this up in, at our next meeting, whenever that is. I, I did do a, um, a pass by the uh, Stremsterfer uh, project that's on Cold Springs Road. We uh, took that up about a year ago, and I just wanted to know if uh, they had ever completed all of the requirements for that application. So if uh, at some point staff could uh, let us know about that. And also I understand that the, um, there's a change in the use of the Herrick building, uh, the Taylor Drobish building um, that was uh, planned to be an event center. Um, 
I saw some signage and uh, I just, I didn't know if that's gonna come back before the Planning Commission. And so if staff has uh, some information that you can share with us about that, I'd like to hear it. But otherwise, if, if you're not prepared to address it, we can take it up at another meeting. Thank you. Okay, Barbara. No, I don't have any questions. Okay. So regarding the stem surfer property, the city has issued a construction permit to accomplish what was conditioned of that applicant by the commission. Uh, I don't believe any inspections have yet to be performed, uh, but the, the activities and the requirements of your conditional approval of that structure are components of that building permit. And as for the Herrick building, yeah, the city has heard uh, rumors of occupancy by the uh, by another business in the uh, saloon portion, and we have some understanding that that applicant prop or not property owner but applicant or user of that site may utilize the event center for activities related to the bar portion. Thank you. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, I'll go ahead and be a little bit more, I can be more specific. Uh, the public house has vacated the Empire Theater where they previously were. And it's my understanding then they are entering into a lease with the property owners uh, to convert the hangman's tree uh, which was uh, changed from a bar to an ice cream shop. They want to make it back into a bar. Uh, we haven't received the uh, building permit application for the TI for that yet. Um, and then they do plan on using uh, 301, that's the Herrick Hall, uh, that did receive a approval of a conditional use permit from an event center. It's my understanding they want to uh, basically rely on that approval of a conditional use permit for an event center for, and I'm just making an assumption, music, because they were attempting to do music in the Empire Theater space, but that never really happened. Okay. Thank you. Interesting changes. Yes. Anything else? I have a curiosity question, John. Okay. Is the Planning Commission going to be involved in any way with this new request to convert the hotel to lodging for homeless? That was in the Mountain Democrat? Or oh, that's not in our purview at all? It is. Um, I can, I'll attempt to make a little comment on that. Should the county acquire that property, it becomes the property of the county of El Dorado, they will no longer be under the city's zoning code and regulations. Okay, thank you. So the only avenue that the city would have to uh, critique such a uh, project would be through CEQA. So we could we could examine and provide comments to their uh, secret document. Thank you. You're welcome. Forgive my ignorance, but is that under like the project home key program that they were? I think so. Okay. Yes, I think you're right. Okay. Large article on the Mountain Democrat. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Okay, anything else? Hereby adjourn the meeting of this commission until a date in the future. Have a good evening, everyone. <laughs>